Ohio, but they're half of the special needs cases. Like the Miller children, the mysterious crippling disease that affects three of these five brothers and sisters has no name and no known cure. Their father, Bob Miller, says he realizes there's a crisis in the community, which is why he and two other fathers, Erwin Kuhns and Robert Hersberger, agreed to break a strict Amish rule that forbids them to appear on camera. They sat for an informal interview. Does it make the Amish community start talking amongst yourselves about what these diseases are, where they're coming from? It definitely does, yes. But if we don't know anything about who, what it is, that makes it rough. Take, for example, the Byler girls. These three Amish sisters were all born with a condition that mysteriously leads to severe mental retardation and a host of physical problems. Last year, doctors figured out that the girls have the gene for something called Cohen syndrome, only 100 known cases worldwide. Since then, more than a dozen other cases of Cohen's have been discovered right here in Ohio Amish country. Is that the Cohen's disease? Cohen's disease. Cohen's disease that nobody knew was around here, and he found, what, 20, 20 to 30 cases in this area now? Nobody knew about it. Is there a cure for it? Not a cure that they know of. But does it help just having a name? It sure does. Because for so many years, the Amish have had no names for these disorders. It was a mystery why half the headstones in Amish cemeteries were headstones of children. The genetic problems come down to something called the founder effect, because the nearly 150,000 Amish in America can trace their roots back to a few hundred German-Swiss settlers who brought the Amish and Mennonite faiths to the United States back in the 18th century. Over generations of intermarriage, rare genetic flaws have shown up, flaws which most of us carry within our genetic makeup, but which don't show up unless we marry someone else with the same rare genetic markers. Are you concerned that a lot of these are genetic diseases, that they're getting worse? Oh, I believe that's definitely uh, something that's happening, yes. People talking about that? Mm -hmm. But what to do about it, we don't know about that yet. What they decided to do was pull the whole community together, as they always do in a crisis, and in this case, they held an auction and raised enough to build a clinic within Buggy Range, right in the heart of their community. No more half-day, horse-drawn commutes to the hospital. And they hired a pediatrician and researcher named Dr. Han Wong to start caring for their children. Good job. All right. When I first saw them, I have no idea what they have, but I know one thing for sure. They needed somebody to help them. Did you know what to expect when you first came out here? No, I don't think so. I've got a daughter right now that's not too good. With this clinic, I can come over here every day. And see Dr. And Wong. And see Dr. Wong. If she's not good enough to be, to be able to come over here, he has come to the house. Hey, Bobby. What you doing over there? During our visit to Ohio, Dr. Wong made a house call to check on Bob Miller's children. Bobby Jr., the sickest of the kids, can't tell Dr. Wong what's bothering him because he can't even talk. Uh, and Dr. Wong has to treat these challenging cases under the most rudimentary conditions since Amish custom prohibits electricity. Do you ever get frustrated with the limitations that are placed on you by their culture? I don't think so. I think this culture has its own heritage in this country. We are not come here to change them. You're not here to change them? I don't think nobody can change them. Certain homes like this one have taken small steps toward change. Some, who needed life-saving medical equipment, asked for special dispensation from the Amish bishop to install solar panels just to run the machines. And remember those girls with Cohen syndrome? Their mother, Iva Byler, made a more drastic change. She left the church altogether. She made that decision eight years ago after her third child in a row showed signs of this crippling disorder. So this is Betty Ann? Yes. She's 24. And she functions at a nine-month level. Nine-month. 
Irma is 22 and functions as a five-year-old. Nini, you go, girl. And Linda, at age 19, can't even sit up, let alone talk. As soon as I had the third one, I knew. They kept telling me, no, she's okay. No, she wasn't. I could hear by her cry that she was going to be like the others. Their cry is different. You can tell. After you live with it that long, you know. How did you take care of them? You didn't have electricity. Mm -mm. Didn't have a car. Mm -mm. Needed to go to the doctor quite often. Mm -hmm. Oh, all the time. Now, when she needs to go to the doctor, she just pushes a button and wheels the girls into her van. She's left buggy rides and the whole Amish lifestyle behind. But the price was being shunned forever by the community, as well as her ex-husband and her two healthy adult children. Did you have a hard time with that? Yes. How different is it now, raising your daughters? Much easier. Much easier. And I think they are the ones that benefit. Irma's now tuned into the 20th century, and I was plugged into the 21st. Using a genealogy website, she's figured out she and her ex-husband were distantly related. But pretty much everybody who's Amish is related somehow. It pretty much looks that way. But people didn't know that? I didn't. Is this a very well-kept secret? No, I don't think the Amish really understand that it's a genetic disorder that causes this, the, the handicapping condition. What do the Amish think it is? God's will. It's God's will. It's in God's hands. You hear that too? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Linda? Hello. Dr. Harold Cross, who's from an Amish background himself, has heard that for more than 40 years since he first discovered the high incidence of genetic problems in the Amish back in the 1960s. At the time we did this in the 60s, although we used state-of-the-art medical technology and genetics technology at the time, we didn't know about the human genome. We weren't able to, to, to drill down and get to the specific molecular defects. So I always felt like we hadn't finished the job that we had started doing. He's finishing the job now learning by examining some of the children here in Geauga County, Ohio, and teaming up with researchers in this London lab to find the actual genes that are causing these Amish disorders. What we're really trying to do eventually by pinning down the mutation is to find some kind of treatment. If we can find out what went wrong, we might be able to correct it. Hello. Hi. They've already identified genes to several rare conditions, including this debilitating seizure disorder found in only 12 people worldwide, all Amish children. There are no cures in sight yet, but these doctors are able to offer the next best thing, premarital testing, to help future parents avoid tragedies like this. It's a powerful new tool for the Amish if they choose to use it. Where do you stand on genetic testing before you get married? As far as that, we don't believe in it. Not mm -hmm. being tested beforehand. Do you it's, think that will change? Yeah, it might to a certain extent. But it's... I think it's up to God. Robert, if you were getting married now, and you knew that there were genetic diseases out here, would you get tested? No, I wouldn't. That's our, our lifestyle is that way. We, we trust God to take care of that, you know. We just, it's the way we, we live. They're risking the lives of their children. Joyce Brubaker, who comes from the slightly less orthodox Mennonite faith, says, at a minimum, the Amish and Mennonites should be testing their children as soon as they're born. That's what saved her daughter Shayla's life. After her first child, Monty, died of an unusual-sounding genetic condition called maple syrup urine disease, Joyce had Shayla tested, and she was positive. Do you ever think about what would have happened if your parents hadn't had you tested? Uh, well, I probably would have been in a coma or died at that point, or had brain swelling, which would have took me very dramatic. I mean, it would just boom, 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 I would have been dead. With maple syrup urine disease, the body turns protein into poison, causing brain damage. Shayla was immediately put on a strict, low-protein diet. Now she's 20 years old and healthy. This youngest generation, are there becoming more and more cases of it? 
Yes, definitely there's the an increase in incidence. What are you going to do about that? There's nothing to do about those mutations. There is, except to try to um, maybe prevent some intermarriage, but that is kind of hard to do. <laughs> hard to do indeed. Marrying outside the faith could create a healthier gene pool, but it would also ultimately destroy the very essence of what it means to be Amish. Iva Byler knows all too well that's probably not going to happen. I have a son that married a girl. They shared the same great-great-grandfather. And when he called me to tell me that he was going to get married, I said, do you realize that you already stand a big chance to have a handicapped child since you have three siblings? And he says, yes, I know. He got married anyway. Fred resisted the rules. 